The world is changing. Fitch ratings downgraded the United States creditworthiness from triple A to double A. The US was once the absolute economic power in the world and the US dollar was the most desired currency globally. Maybe it still is, but cracks are appearing in this fortress. The US could have borrowed money from anyone and there was never even a sliver of doubt that the country couldn't pay it back. But credit agencies like Fitch have started to paint a new picture by downgrading the country's creditworthiness. This seems like a disaster for stock market investors who are used to seeing financial analysts downgrading a stock resulting in price drops and drama in the market. It is only natural to assume getting downgraded is a disaster for the US. The media certainly make it seem to be a big deal. But is this downgrade really that bad? Is it a sign of the change in the world economic order? And if so, what are its implications for individual investors and their portfolios? Let's talk about that. I am Huda Mer, founder and CEO of Stockart, and on this channel I share detailed fundamental analysis and talk about interesting investing related stories. Most of you already heard of the Fitch ratings downgrade of the United States, but it's not the only credit rating agency that downgraded the US. The S&P rating agency downgraded the US back in 2011. Three big rating agencies in the world rate the creditworthiness of entities such as companies and governments. Moody's Investors Services, S&P, and Fitch Ratings. These three have a 95% global share in the rating market. The recent downgrade hasn't also come out of the blue. Fitch Ratings has had the US on creditworthiness watch from time to time and has issued a negative outlook in 2011, 2013, 2019, 2020, and earlier in 2023 before the actual downgrade. The prominent reason for all these downgrade warnings and creditworthiness watches has been the consistent rise in the US debt in relation to the country's GDP and the political standoff and uncertainties in raising the debt ceiling. Are the rating agencies correct? In logical terms, when someone's creditworthiness goes down, it's because there is a higher chance that the person will not be able to make the debt payments. Is there a higher chance for the US not to be able to repay its debt? It all starts with the government's budgeting process. When the revenue it earns from taxes is insufficient to cover all the other expenses such as healthcare, defense expenses, and etc., it must borrow money. Typically, the US sell bonds to its citizens and the rest of the world to borrow this money. We know these bonds as treasuries. As we all know, the US has been borrowing more and more money year after year, and it keeps hitting that allowed amount of debt and has to increase it through an approval process. If the government doesn't get the approval, it won't be able to pay for its expenses, including paying the interest on all the borrowed money over the years. This gets even more critical when the interest rate is going up. The higher the interest rate, the government pays to other countries to borrow money from them, the higher the debt repayment cost, which then requires the government to go through the process of raising the debt ceiling again. This is where Fitch ratings insert a concern. 
it references the political standoff and resorting to last minute decisions to increase the debt ceiling as a risk. It's in a way true if these uncertainties around the ability to pay interest scare borrowers from around the world and result in them not wanting to lend money to the US anymore, then it means the US has lower credit worthiness. Is that a real risk? Firstly, borrowers globally like higher interest rates. Everyone wants that safe and secure yield when the US pays higher rates in a world where most economies are struggling. So political standoffs won't prevent the rest of the world from having US treasuries on their balance sheet, at least for now. Secondly, there is no way the US government let the US default on its debt. People would stop getting paid and it would, as Fitch says, threaten the country's credit worthiness for precisely the same reason. It is very, very unlikely that the government stop making payments. Just recently, the House and the Senate passed a bipartisan bill to suspend the debt limit until 2025 to avoid such uncertainties. Also, relatively speaking, this downgrade makes limited sense. Think about it for a second. Microsoft now has higher credit worthiness than the US government. It is a bit absurd to say the government has lower credit worthiness than the companies that operate within its laws and financial system. If the US government defaults on its debt, no one can really say that Microsoft, an American company, is safe and risk-free in that environment. In a way, the downgrade doesn't really matter at this point because no one believes that the US will stop paying its debt and everyone wants the high yield the US debt generates we must discuss one real long-term threat to the US's global credit worthiness, however. But before that, I want to tell you about how a stock card can help you in avoiding debt risk in companies you invest in. One of the most important things you can do for your financial well-being is to invest in companies that don't have debt problems. As we just discussed, even a country as powerful as the United States can worry investors because it carries too much debt. That's why on the stock card platform, my team and I ensured you can see and understand companies' cash versus debt situation easily. The debt versus cash situation is a cornerstone of all my fundamental analysis. I never invest in a company without understanding whether it has the cash to pay off its debt. Look up any company you plan to invest in and on their financial strengths, go to the cash versus debt section. There you can see cash versus current debt, long-term debt, and their trend quarter over quarter, year after year, and three-year trend. Go to stockart.io and look up any company. I leave a link to Stockart in the show notes. Now let's talk about the long-term threat to the US credit worthiness. One of the reasons everyone in the world wants to hold the US's debt is that it's the world's reserve currency. We hear that all the time. Central banks and major financial institutions hold the US dollars for international transactions. When you hold US debt, you can get paid interest in dollars and that's what people want. They want to get paid in US dollars. The long-term threat can be that people won't want and need to hold as much US dollar anymore. That's possible when there is an alternative currency that the central banks would also want to hold. 
Every few years, we see an attempt by global players to reduce the US dollar's status as a reserve currency. For example, at the peak of cryptocurrency interest, there was a discussion that central banks hold Bitcoin as a reserve currency. Recently, there has been talks that China, India, and Russia are settling oil purchases in non-dollar denominations. These things happen because other countries want to lead the world or at least share the power with the United States. And every little thing that reduces the US's leadership can make a difference in the long run. A man can only lead when others accept him as a leader. For the US, it can only lead the world until others accept it as one. The downgrade in 2011 by SMP didn't have a major impact then, but it gave Fitch the courage to downgrade the US in 2023. One small chipping at the wall of the US's credit worthiness can gradually erode the fortress. So the Fitch downgrade should be a wake-up call to the US to get its act together. Let's wrap up by talking about the impact on our individual portfolios. When S&P downgraded the US in 2011, the stock market dropped 5-7% to on the same day. The same happened when Fitch's rating came out on August 1st, 2023. After the 2011 downgrade, as we all know, the US stock market went on several years of upgrade rally and nothing really changed because of the downgrade itself. The same will most likely happen after the Fitch ratings downgrade. So there won't be an immediate sustained impact on our portfolios because of the downgrade. But remember, no one can predict the market's direction, especially the macroeconomic indicators at such a scale as the world's reaction to the US's creditworthiness downgrade. I can publish this video, and despite all our logical arguments, we may have the biggest drop in the stock market the next day that the market opens. You have to always hedge against such risks. How do you do that? There are complicated ways that sophisticated professional investors do this. For example, we heard Bill Ackman, the famous hedge fund manager, explaining his strategy of shorting 30-year US treasuries by buying options. His decision wasn't just due to the Fitch rating downgrade, but he made that Fitch downgrade as one of the reasons to support his decision. There are other and simpler ways to hedge against big macro factors for individual investors. The easiest way in the scenario is to invest in countries besides the US, especially for those long-term investment accounts. For example, in my 401k account, I allocate 60% to the US overall index fund and 40% to the rest of the world index fund. You may want to consider some sort of hedge in your own long-term investments. See you next time.